welcome everyone to the West Orange Town Council meeting of Tuesday, May 4th, 2021. Madam Clerk. This is to inform the general public that this meeting is being held in compliance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. The annual notice was emailed to the Star Ledger and filed in the Township Clerk's Office on November 30th, 2020, and published in the West Orange Chronicle on December 10th, 2020. Councilwoman Castellino? Present. Councilwoman McCartney? Present. Councilman Rutherford? Present. Councilwoman Williams? Present. Council President Matute Brown? Present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And at this time, I am going to turn over um, the discussion to Councilwoman McCartney for her to introduce the presenters. Councilwoman. Excellent. Thank you very much, Council President. Um, <clears throat> So we have a presentation this evening from graduate students at Stevens Institute, and we have a longtime friend, Professor Dib Sarkor, a um, friend of mine. Uh, he is the professor of their environmental engineering uh, department. And he reached out to me at the end of 2020, telling me that he was assembling a team of students, graduate students, to create a sustainability management plan. And as the West Orange sustainable Jersey coordinator for the township. It was like music to my ears uh, to have a team that could just assist and provide resources to help the, uh, the township and the environmental commission alone. So this evening we have uh, Gabe Almanza, uh, Nazir, Nazreen, sorry, Nazreen Akthir, Greg Wu, um, Dan Goodman, and Marco Palladino, but I don't see him on the screen right now. So um, I would like the students to present the sustainability management team for the township. So as a, an advisory course for all of us to, to look at. Thank you. All right, Nazreen. Okay, perfect. So Nazrin's going to be the one sharing the screen and I'll be the one uh, sort of pontificating for the next 15 or so minutes. No, we don't pontificate, uh, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hello, everybody. Um, again, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us this opportunity to work with West Orange. Um, I'm Gabe Almanza, you've already heard that, and I'm here to present to you all an overview of our West Orange Sustainability Management Plan. Uh, next slide. So, as you've already heard, we're master's students at the Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken. And we'd like to thank you and our advisors and especially our liaison, Susan, for giving us uh, you know, sort of the advice that we needed throughout the semester. Susan's been awesome at communicating with us and giving us constructive feedback. And of course, forwarding us whatever information we need. So again, thank you very much, Susan. It's been very greatly appreciated. Most welcome. Um, okay, so the purpose of the West Orange Sustainability Management Plan is to sort of establish a route to long-term economic resiliency, strong community, and environmental health. And so in order to make this doable and affordable, the SMP will include project management tools, structure, and resources. Um, areas of focus will be water, energy, greenhouse gas emissions, transportation, community well-being, and land preservation, all aligning with Sustainable Jersey's framework. Next slide. So sustainability, um, especially for a municipality, goes well beyond town hall. And it's not really a cookie cutter recipe that we can sort of mail in from students. Um, over the short socially limited semester, we've listened, asked questions, and engaged to build a West Orange SMP, which can make a difference. Um, that means it's our job to nudge you beyond your comfort zones and to find opportunities for improvement. Uh, next slide. So to succeed in this project, we've created a sort of step-by-step -step project management plan. Um, our plan required feedback, and as West Orange pursues projects, you'll need feedback to measure your work. Um, sustainability includes continuous improvement. So ongoing feedback will allow your programs to continuously improve, and our SMP to be a sort of living document for you all. Next slide. So <clears throat> internally, our teams worked on the principle that change requires about five components, those being vision, skills, 
incentives, resources, and a plan. Um, success is less likely if any of them is missing. So from Susan, Mike Brick, Lenny, and West Orange's master plan, it's clear that West Orange has vision and skills. And we hope to assist with two components, resources and action plans. So from resources and action plans, our message to you all will be to focus on three themes, indicators and feedback, project planning and management, and use of available resources. Next slide. So as a key indicator, leaders in sustainability measure and record their carbon footprints. West Orange doesn't really have an inventory for this sort of thing. Um, so in order to assess West Orange's current standing, it's essential to collect this data. Um, the first step for West Orange is to start an inventory of the township's current carbon footprints. This can be based on a few contributors to the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. Um, and then of course, once the baseline is established, a climate action plan can be created to sort of reduce um, GHG emissions. Next slide. So it'll be easiest for the township to start with inventorying the emissions related to municipal operations. Um, because it may be difficult to start off with a lot of data, the township can start by measuring their energy utility bills. So for example, Maplewood Township in 2015 track the energy uses of the municipal buildings and facilities, of streets and traffic lights, and municipal operations of vehicles. As you can see in the chart, these were three fuel sources that contributed to the township's municipal emissions. Looking at the data in a different way, Maplewood Township found that 47% of the emissions came from buildings and facilities, while only 23% came from street and traffic lights. This means these two categories became the main targets within their climate action plan. Next slide. Um, many West Orange residents would like to see more involvement in renewable energy and energy efficiency, um, and they'd also like to know how they themselves can engage. Um, reaching residents can sometimes be a challenge. Um, New Jersey Clean Energy has resources that can sort of be tapped into to assist. Um, the following are actions that will be detailed in the energy section of our paper. Energy tracking and management, energy efficiency for, for municipal buildings, residential energy efficiency outreach, and municipally supported um, community solar. Next slide. So the energy plan and the carbon footprint go hand in hand and start with the same first step. This is tracking energy utility bills. Um, so Gloucester Township created a municipal buildings inventory where they tracked energy usage and used this to sort of, you know, determine their energy efficiency measures through the New Jersey Clean Energy Program. Um, West Orange can use the EPA's Energy Star Portfolio Manager to benchmark and track municipal buildings' energy and water consumption. So after benchmarking, the New Jersey Clean Energy Program can provide financial incentives to you know, suggest energy efficiency actions. Next slide. So uh, in the area of land use and development, um, West Orange's decision to establish a sustainable checklist expresses vision and will bring long-term benefits. Um, studies show that the additional cost of green construction is between zero and 2%, not all that much. Um, consider the 30 to 50 year lifespan of buildings and infrastructure. Um, Projects built today will serve our children and our grandchildren, and if built to these standards, will last longer and have lower costs of operation. So for projects over a certain size, we urge West Orange to raise your vision even higher by incorporating selected lead and envision standards in building codes, ordinances, and zoning regulations. So for zero to 2% greater costs, West Orange can have buildings and infrastructure that cost less to operate, last longer, and reduces greenhouse gas emissions. A win, win, win. So West Orange is already um, rich with historic assets and attractive tourist sites. Um, with the desire to keep golf courses as golf courses, it's necessary to find ways to sort of generate revenue. Um, raising your lead and envision standards could be another magnet to residents, um, businesses, and visitors. So for transportation, optimizing current bus routes could receive funds from the FTA. West Orange may be eligible for both transportation infrastructure and bus system grants. Um, West, West Orange also is eligible for the New Jersey Zero Emission Program, which is a new $15 million pilot voucher program that supports institutions purchasing new medium duty zero emission vehicles. Um, finally, West Orange can incorporate GIS mapping to determine high traffic risk areas to reduce accidents and improve pedestrian safety at the same time. Um, next slide, please. 
So uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts is actually certified with the highest star communities rating for sustainability in the US. Um, Cambridge focuses on traffic demand management, climate change and air quality, walkability, the city and city electric vehicles. West Orange is on the right path, but it is missing some indicators to help track its progress. Um, McKinsey and company has developed benchmarking for 24 urban transportation systems. They identified critical indicators, um, those being availability, affordability, efficiency, convenience, sustainability, and public perception. So these indicators can guide West Orange and Essex County towards improved public transportation. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000 actually shifted the American national disaster approach from cleanup after an event to mitigation before. Um, this was a monumental shift, which applies to every area of sustainability, including the three categories of water, um, potability, wastewater, and stormwater. Um, this shift requires long-term planning and action instead of reaction. Um, it's been estimated that New Jersey's aged water supply system leaks about 20 to 30% of the water that it carries. So just think about that wasted volume. Um, and yet we all know that the sea level is rising, contaminating our aquifers and population growth will increase water consumption and wastewater. Um, New Jersey American West Orange's carrier is part of a national corporation. In New Jersey, it serves about 2.8 million people across 17 counties. West Orange's wastewater system also is old and not really its own. Um, both utilities will meet state and national standards. And as a single municipality, West Orange has little supply side leverage, unfortunately. So West, where West Orange can have impact is on the demand side. That is by sort of reducing consumption in homes and in businesses. The reduced consumption reduces waste lightening the load on existing systems and reducing costs. So we encourage West Orange leaders to consider or to reconsider a water conservation ordinance. So in Ridgewood, New Jersey, for example, it uses one to limit lawn care consumption and gives exemptions when smart controllers are used. Um, Sustainable Jersey is also establishing a gold star standard in water. Energy star portfolio can also be used for this to benchmark and track municipal water use, the multi-purpose tool. Um, LEAD and ENVISION also include standards which reduce water use during operations, but also during construction. So what's important first is to recognize the value of water now and in the long run. Uh, next slide, please. So this map here that you're seeing on your screen is um, a map that sort of marks Sustainable Jersey's certified municipalities. Bronze stars, um, you know, like West Orange, silver, and one gold. Um, each flag marks a community engaged um, in sustainable pursuits like yours. So these municipalities determine indicators, they set benchmarks, and they find funding and manage action plans. Um, they also can share success stories that you can to also communicate to West Orange residents. Um, next slide, please. So they say that a company's greatest resource is people. And of course, towns are no different. Um, the township of West Orange has been blessed with a rare blend of structures and greenery, giving residents and visitors a perfect place to relax or be active as they choose. Um, so we commend the township of West Orange for investing in outdoor plaques, detailing the natural importance of its many green spaces, um, identifying species and describing the interaction of different environmental elements. Um, we encourage West Orange also to continue with this effort because it's truly a great one. Um, we applaud West Orange for also engaging people in hikes, 5Ks, pop-up bike safety workshops, farmer's markets, downtown Thursdays, and other activities. Um, of course, a community that plays together stays together happily. Um, so also, West Orange's website could serve as a sort of unifying tool or even a sales tool. Currently, it's a challenge to use, um, So, but of course, that's okay. Um, increasing accessibility will improve community engagement. At least that's what we believe. Um, Sustainable Jersey offers free website support as well. Next slide. So West Orange has a sort of shop local program, but that doesn't really quantify participation level or benefits. Is it successful? How successful? How is success even defined? Um, one of the key points of our SP is to determine and measure indicators for every program occurring or being considered. Of course, uh, marijuana legalization is something that's been on everyone's mind. It seems like uh, one of the hottest topics these days, and it's a fact to which municipalities must respond. Um, this includes policies for sales, growth, the production of cannabis, and taxes. 
Um, West Orange can also consider using blighted or vacant areas to grow marijuana as well. Um, and of course, there are two New Jersey specific grants to which the town can apply. Those being the Cooperative Marketing Grant and the Destination Marketing Organization Grant, both of, it, both of which would be received by a town that's trying to position itself as a sort of travel destination within the Garden State area. Um, next slide. So on May 18th, um, the completed sustainability management plan will be presented to our professors. So based on their feedback, we'll promptly update the PowerPoint and report and then submit them to the West Orange Environmental Council, uh, Commission, sorry. So from slide six, uh, managing complex change, it was determined that attention to resources and the action plan would yield more effective and efficient projects. So the themes of this presentation have been indicators and feedback, project planning and management, and use of available resources. So indicators, of course, are necessary to mark current performance and to track change. Project management is a current professional practice, of course, and our sustainability management plan will contain a chapter describing the process for building and using a project management action plan. Resources, when used effectively, reduce costs and save time. Um, we recommend use of outside resources, of course, organizations, government agencies, and programs relating to your project. So one additional resource will be necessary in order to pull together all of these pieces. Um, we believe that that would be a paid sustainability officer or consultant. So while West Orange has knowledgeable, committed environmental leaders, what's missing is a, per is a person whose occupation it is to keep up with federal, state, and county programs and to organize and manage each project. So sustainability has, of course, become an increasingly central part of community engagement, and you know, like municipal infrastructure or finances, it's a profession. So the financial and performance benefits should solidly exceed the costs. Next slide. Thank you very much. Uh, we really hope that you all enjoyed this presentation and we hope that it was very insightful. <laughs> Again, I'm Gabe and you know, the rest of the team is sort of pinned at the top of the screen. Um, but again, thank you. And I guess we'll open the floor for questions. I'm not really sure how this so this is the first town council meeting I've ever attended, so. Hi Gabe, thank you so very much to you and your team for working with our environmental commission to come up with the um, indicators that we should be looking at and then looking forward to um, hearing feedback after your um, professors have, have provided feedback for you. Um, I don't know if any of my um, council colleagues had any questions, but I certainly wanted to thank you for your time and your energy and your effort and your commitment to ensuring um, sustainability um, in West Orange. Do any of my council colleagues have any questions or comments they want to make? I don't see you, so. Um, I just wanted to make a comment, really, and a, a, a sincere thank you, particularly they started off as a living document. So not only did we learn about additional resources that are out there, as you just heard the list through this presentation, I also learned new words like pluvial and fluvial <laughs> uh, about rainfall and uh, water conservation uh, terminology. Um, I, the township certainly, uh, after hearing this, we certainly on the, are on the right path. So I appreciate all of uh, that uh, recognition in the comments. And you see that there is so much more out there for us to pursue. And right after, I know Gabe just mentioned the bike safety, the pedestrian safety, easy ride bike, pop-up bike lane. That was just this entire weekend with the police department, pedestrian safety members. We even got the environmental commission um, to partner because we had trees from Arbor Day that we were able to give out to all the participants. So it was really collaborative effort. And right after that, um, I notified our grant writer to look at a sustainable Jersey grant for police electric bikes. So, um, you know, everything we do, we're moving that uh, energy efficiency. So thank you for giving them the time. Uh, and presenting this plan to the township. Thank Wonderful. You. Well, I'm sure they'll be back um, to, to <laughs> let us know what, what else um, we can do to improve our um, sustainability management programs here in town. So thank you very much for uh, your time once again. And um, Council President, uh, Council Rutherford has his hand up as well. Thank you, Councilman Rutherford. 
Uh, yeah, I know we're tight on time. I just wanted to say thank you uh, to the presenters. You guys did an awesome job. Uh, very enlightening. I have a quick question, though. I, I know about LEED, and I understand you quoted some data about the cost to build green. Thought that was very interesting. Would love to know the source of that. Um, but you used a, a term, envision for infrastructure. I have no idea what that is. Can you guys tell us? Great. Uh, sure. I, I'm, I'm Stan. Um, envision is uh, like LEED. In fact, it came after LEED. Um, it's a measurement system for like LEED is for buildings, but Envision is for infrastructure. Initially, people tried to use LEED when they were doing infrastructure projects, but it was uh, like putting a, a horseshoe on your own foot, you know, just didn't fit. Okay. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Great question, Bill. I asked the same during the initial presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rutherford, uh, for that question. Um, do you, any of my other council colleagues have any questions or comments that they would like to make? Uh, Councilwoman Casalina, I just scrolled by you on the top. Councilwoman Casalina? I didn't know if Laura was on mute to me. No, I just wanna uh, thank you. Great presentation. And uh, you hit a lot of points. Uh, we've all um, been working uh, with Catherine Kapoor, our grant writer, with that uh, cooperative marketing grant. Uh, we have hired a team at Downtown Lines, which I'll be elaborating on in my report, but um, we've, we've been looking forward to working on that and bringing some festivals and whatnot to uh, recognition to the township. So we're very excited about that. Glad to see that it made the report and a very nice job. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all your hard work. Very Council impressive. President, let me add just to pick up where Michelle, where Councilwoman Casalino just said that when the students were on the tour of West Orange, Megan Brid Brill did join us because we started out at the Thomas Edison National Historic Park, and that's where the tour began. Um, and of, of course, Megan was so helpful along the Main Street corridor, giving them a lot of information. Okay. One of the slides did talk about tourism. And yeah. I know that the Downtown Alliance has just um, started a contract with Suasion. And yes. I know how excited Megan is uh, about the, the new uh, press release that just came out and information that's coming out with that marketing group. And another slide, just in my notes here, um, after the last, actually it was the executive drive plan, the uh, planning board heard last week uh, there, there was talk about one of the sustainability plan about salvaging and recycling construction debris. I thought we already had an ordinance on that and we don't. So I was glad that it came up during this presentation because we can move forward on uh, making sure I know it was a discussion that we had with our previous recycling coordinator who just retired. So I will revisit that conversation with the new recycling coordinator. So we are, we're learning as we go. So I, I really do appreciate everything that came out of this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, I, I'm looking at the time, so I'm gonna ask my council colleagues to please be brief with their council liaisons. Councilwoman Casalino. Yes, thank you, council president. Um, before we start, uh, and I apologize, I wanted to, to remind you earlier, we had a, a, a a big loss in the community this this uh, past couple of days. Our deputy mayor, um, uh, Gonzalo, known as uh, Dr. Zal Velez, had passed away um, a few days ago. And uh, he's been a wonderful ambassador for the community for 29 years. He's been our mm -hmm. deputy mayor. And he did it with such love and such commitment and passion. Uh, his wife, as we all know, is Dr. Josie Velez, who serves as our commissioner on the Public Relations Commission. And if we could just take a moment of silence and to say a prayer for, for the family and for him as well. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. I appreciate that. Um, very, very, very tough loss this week. Um, to, um, to elaborate 
on what was just said with, uh, with the last uh, presentation. Um, so Downtown Alliance uh, is rolling out their newsletter. It might have hit uh, some of you today, definitely by tomorrow. We want you to sign up. If you don't receive it for the downtown newsletter, go to uh, downtown um, what, wosignup.com. The banners are all over town. Uh, lots of important information. We have Cinco de Mayo this week. So a lot of our restaurants are celebrating that and have specials. Uh, Mother's Day is coming up, a better way to shop downtown, visit our local restaurants. Um, we have downtown Thursday starting uh, next month and the schedule is on there starting right on June 3rd in the Eagle Rock uh, area with the food walking food tours that you could sign up for, uh, live music, just a lot of unique activities, uh, very um, all social distance, uh, which is great for the downtown. Our farmer's market will commence on May 15th. Very excited to bring the farmer's market back and we do need volunteers this year. The farmer's market is looking for volunteers, anybody that could don uh, uh, to donate some time in the mornings uh, between eight and nine, or for when uh, to wrap up the farmer's market between two and three. Uh, usually it's real quick, the, the end of the day between two and 2.30. Please email Ms. Brill at downtown at westorange.org. Uh, also ribbon cutting is scheduled. Another new business, we're welcoming Truly Medical to the downtown. Uh, which will be across from 80 Main Street. So a lot of exciting times as uh, Councilwoman McCartney touched base on. Uh, Ms. Brill has been very busy working with some consultants that uh, we just hired. Uh, EMI Strategies will be handing a lot, handling a lot of our uh, events and Suasion, a PR firm, which will also be assisting us um, with uh, town-wide projects as well. So very exciting times here in the township. And uh, we look forward to uh, a great summer, uh, spring and summer months to follow. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman Casalino. Councilwoman McCartney. Thank you. I know you asked us to be brief, but spring has sprung and there is so much going on. Where I'll start with the West Orange Arts Council. We press send on Friday on a $25,000 Bloomberg Asphalt Art Grant in coordination with the um, Pedestrian Safety Commission and the Easy Ride Safe Routes to School at Kelly Elementary. So our next step will be wait to uh, hear who the awardees are. And then there will be a call for artists to have there are three intersections uh, that were cited in the plan. And we will have a call for artists to have uh, guidelines on what needs to be painted on the streets for those uh, intersections. The West Orange High School Advanced Placement uh, Studies <laughs> Virtual Art Exhibit is underway right now. And please visit woarts.org. The Dear Mama Perspectives on American Motherhood is uh, on now at the gallery through May 15th. And a call for artists did go out for the Black Lives Matter event uh, for June, which will be the for Juneteenth. Poetry, art, um, more to come on that. The planning board met, um, we had a special meeting for executive drive. That plan was unanimously approved for 100 and 200 Bruni Circle for multifamily uh, units. There were no variances. They're consolidating the lot, lots. Uh, it's an 18.3 acre site. 64 affordable units in the plan, um, parking, sidewalks throughout, the dog park, canopy trees, 253 trees added, 97 evergreens. Um, it was, and uh, I did wanna mention they are adding 14 electric charging stations and they met the provisions that we added to that sustainability plan to the executive drive application. So they met all of that, uh, those requirements. The West Orange Environmental Commission, um, like I said, gave out trees on, uh, at the bike rodeo or the bike workshop, pop-up bike lane this weekend. We are going to launch the Heritage Trees Program. So that had to do with the plaques also that the Sustainability Management Plan team talked about. Um, 
And just a special thank you to the police department too for all their help with the pop-up bike lane. Um, and I am willing to work with the public information officer and the police, uh, the police department to inform the residents about the tree amendments that were made. Our forester did send out over 100 letters to all contractors that do work in town, but we need to do a stronger um, appeal to the residents to know uh, what is expected of them to comply with our new ordinances. And I wanted to save the date, ask everyone to save the date of July 30th. The chamber is partnering with Pleasant Valley Productions uh, on, Mar on, I'm sorry, July 30th for a Beach Boy tribute and a social networking event up at OSPAC. So more details to come on that, but we are working with um, a couple of food trucks and of course, Camille Vecchio uh, for that event. And oh, I, another, going back to the planning board, sorry, uh, Central Avenue was also approved. 810 Central Avenue, 94 units, 1,200 square feet of amenity space, 3,500 square feet of commercial space, plus parking, plus 22 public parking spaces, which have long been desired for that Valley Corridor, Lunar Stage, and the Arts Council, and Pink Cupcakes, and the restaurants that are in the area. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman McCartney. That's very exciting, the redevelopment <laughs> that's happening down a the lot going on. Yeah, lots mm -hmm. going on. Thank you. Councilman Rutherford. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, just uh, two updates. One on open space. We are meeting tomorrow night, that is May 5th, uh, at Rock Spring Golf Course. So very much looking forward to that. Obviously, we will still maintain uh, COVID protocols and everyone will uh, have to follow the rules, uh, which um, uh, even though you know we are getting vaccinated and things are getting better, we're still not out of the pandemic yet. Um, so that should be exciting, though, to be able to see people in person for the first time in quite a while. Uh, and then on May 12th, uh, I'd like to invite everyone to the Pedestrian Safety Advisory Board meeting. We do have uh, some significant work to get done in order to help our mayor uh, with regard to roads and sidewalks, um, as well as a whole bunch of other uh, initiatives. So uh, for the public out there, if you are so inclined, please join us on May 12th as well. Both of those dates can be found on the uh, township website, um, and you can certainly join virtually also. Thank you. That's it. Uh, thank you, Councilman Rutherford. Councilwoman Williams. Thank you, Council President. Um, wanted to remind everyone that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, so please uh, make sure we take care of our mental wellness. Also wanted to acknowledge that the Historical Preservation Commission held a special meeting last week uh, to approve the certificate of appropriateness for the Llewellyn Park Gatehouse. And their next meeting is going to be held on Wednesday, May 12th at 7 p.m. Um, via Zoom. Also to um, just let everyone know in um, celebration of Mental Health Awareness Month, um, WOSAC and the Mental Health Association of Essex and Morris Counties held on Sunday um, a Zoom teen talk on the impact of COVID on teen mental health. Um, and that is available on the WOSAC Facebook page. Um, also, as a reminder, on Thursday, May 6th at 5 p.m. via Zoom, the Rent Leveling Board will hold um, its first meeting. Um, we're looking forward to the public participating and just identifying and defining the role and um, mission of the Rent Leveling Board. Also, just to uh, make sure that the public is aware it, that the NAACP of the Oranges and Maplewood will be holding their virtual Freedom Fund Gala on Saturday, um, May 8th via Zoom at 7 p.m. And also, um, they will be hosting a Zoom webinar on May 6th at 7 p.m. with Chris Durkin being the featured speaker um, to give an update on this year's uh, primary election being held on June 8th. Uh, wanted to wish all of our West Orange mothers a happy Mother's Day that is coming up on Sunday, May 9th. Um, we just want you to enjoy and have the best day um, that you possibly ha can have. Thank you, Council President. 
Thank you, Councilwoman uh, Williams, and I will be brief. The Municipal Alliance met and passed their budget. I am happy to say that their funds are being allocated to the community house, which although virtual, were able to uh, prepare packets for the students to um, be delivered at home and be able to um, work from home in that regard. Um, also, OSPAC, really very excited about their uh, partnership with the high school. May 22nd will be the most incredible thing that was written by Dave Maglioni. Please make sure that you support our high school students. They had a wonderful um, two-day event at OSPAC opening. They finally took the stage back. Very excited for them. Uh, June 5th is the official opening for OSPAC. Make sure that you check the Pleasant Valley production um, website for that as well. And um, that is all I have for you uh, at the moment. And Madam Clerk, can we please open? Um, Council President, we had one other item on the conference agenda, a follow-up discussion on the 2021 budget hearing dates. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't print out the updated one. I certainly appreciate that. So, um, Council colleagues, thank you very much for your response to the both dates that we provided, which was the 12th and the 19th. I understand that um, Councilman Rutherford has a challenge on the 19th. Um, so, I, I, I didn't send out another date. Yes, Councilwoman Casalino. I, I also, I forgot, I have my downtown Alliance meeting that evening. Like if it's a short meeting, I'm good from like five to seven, but. Um, I, I, yeah. I don't know that it will be. So I am going mm -hmm. to ask both um, Mr. Gross and our Madam Moderator, um, what would be the next available date for both? So Council President, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I do know that the pedestrian safety meeting is meeting at the Thomas Edison National Historic Park on the 12th. So Bill, I don't know if, um, you know, you want to comment on that. Yeah, so it mm. obviously does make it tough. I, yeah, I, yeah. so I mean the 12th well, we is we were gonna do two. Tuesdays. Yeah. Well, we, we were we we're working with the availability of both um, uh, um, Lauren and, right. mm -hmm. and, and John and, and Mr. Gross. Um, and yeah. so Mr. Gross, uh, I don't see you on the screen anymore, but are you still here? There yeah. you are. Okay. Well, I mean, here. we could always meet in person if, if we're all vaccinated. Um, those are still very tight quarters on the dais. We go to so, high school. Um, I, I, but we're, we're, are we, we're, we were talking about doing two days so that we don't have the very long mm -hmm. you know, uh, meeting. So um, just a note also, if you do use the high school, I, and if there's it's a public meeting, you will still need a moderator for sound yes. and, and a recording. Yeah. I, 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 want I, record I, it. I I don't, I, I don't want to change the, the format, but I do, I want to accommodate all the council members who have other commitments. So I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Gross, how far, how far out can we push this? Um, we're not in the danger zone We're we're, you know, we're, okay. we're, we're not, you know, we, we are, if you go out another week or so, you know, I, I would certainly like to see you get started in the month of May. For sure, uh, maybe you don't. You know, maybe you know. Again, I, I'm not convinced that you're going to need the second night uh, with the format you and I discussed. Uh, but you know, so if you get it, you get the first meeting scheduled, uh, and even if you don't have a tentative date for the second one, getting the first one done is important. And then you know, a, as you move, move along, you can make a decision about the second. Okay. So, so not to take up any more time that we have, then um, we'll uh, I'll circle back with uh, Mr. Gross and Lauren, and then get some dates out to the council colleagues um, this e late this evening or tomorrow morning, if that works. Sure. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so very much for your patience um, in that regard, and thank you for the reminder. Oh, are uh, we canceling the the May twelfth date as well? I I'm going to circle back. Um, once I speak to um, Mr. Gross and, and, and Lauren, if we can make it, if we can make it work, then then we'll make it work. If not, um, I'll let you know either this evening or tomorrow morning. Um, thank you for the reminder, Miss uh, Madam Clerk. 
I didn't print out the updated uh, conference agenda. I appreciate it. Um, Madam Clerk, please. Okay. This is to inform the general public that this meeting is being held in compliance with section five of the Open Public Meetings Act, chapter 231, public law 1975. The annual notice was emailed to the Star Ledger and filed in the township clerk's office on November 30th, 2020, and published in the West Orange Chronicle on December 10th, 2020. Councilwoman Casalino. Present. Councilwoman McCartney. Present. Councilman Rutherford. Present. Councilwoman Williams. Present. Council President Matuk Brown. Present. Will everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The council is now in their public meeting. Thank you. Madam uh, moderator, please. Hey, thank you. Uh, we are now at the time for public comment, and we will do this by using the raise your hand function located at the bottom of your screen. Um, once pushed, you do not have to push it again. If you are one of our call in patrons, it is star nine. You just have to push it once. And we encourage you, if you are speaking, to push it now. You'll be put right in the queue. You don't have to wait for anyone to finish speaking. And I'm just going to be asking your name and address for the record when we do so. So first up, we have Joe Fagan. If you can follow the prompt on your screen, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. And a good evening to Madam President and your uh, esteemed colleagues and members of the administration. I am, of course, Joe Fagan, Public Information Officer. And thank you all for this opportunity to briefly address the West Orange public this evening. Tonight, I would like to remind West Orange residents about two important matters. First, please be aware that the New Jersey American Water Company, which serves our community, will be doing routine flushing of the water distribution system this week. These are the underground pipes, which are part of the infrastructure that bring water to your home, and some West Orange residents may be affected. This is part of a necessary maintenance and could result in temporary reduced water pressure or discolored water coming from the tap. If you experience discolored water, you can remedy the situation in most cases by running cold water from a faucet at the lowest level of your house or from an outside faucet until the water runs clear. This will help prevent sediment which was flushed from the system from fouling your home plumbing system. In keeping with American Water Company's focus on safety for both customers and employees, please do not approach crews while they are working. For more information and to see a map of the affected areas, please go to NewJerseyAMWater.com or call customer service. Uh, the number is on your water bills. They apologize for any inconvenience and thank you for your patience and understanding while they undertake this necessary maintenance of the water system. Secondly, I would like to briefly talk about the subject of increased training for police officers, which often enters into our public conversation today. It is also frequently a topic for discussion in the national media. West Orange residents, however, would not have to look further than our own police department for results. The West Orange PD has always been at the forefront of implementing programs that result in better community policing. This is especially true when police officers are called to a scene dealing with individuals who may have potential mental health issues. Our police department has partnered with the Mental Health Association of Essex and Morris in a pilot program that trains and helps West Orange police officers better recognize and de-escalate certain situations. The program's overall goal is the appropriate disposition and interaction with non-criminal response calls as it relates to mental health issues. So often we hear about police encounters that end badly where lack of training or unprofessional protocol is cited as the root problem. Other programs have, put in have been put in place nationally to help address the problem of mental health, but the West Orange Police Department is the only police agency within the state of New Jersey involved using a co-responsive program such as this. It helps West Orange police officers prioritize appropriate response techniques and also advocates for treatment over in, <coughs> over in, <coughs> excuse me, 
I spoke with Chief Habit earlier today about the program's success since its inception here in West Orange. He reminded me that mental health associate of Essex and Morris reviews all body cam footage, regardless if they are called to the scene or not. It is subsequently reviewed by the mental health professionals who advise what was done right and identify areas that need improvement. Chief Abbott also stressed that this training is not designated to turn police officers into mental health professionals, but rather is intended as a tool to help make them better trained police officers working to keep our community safe. So in many ways, the West Orange Police Department is leading the way to the future of community policing and residents can rest easy knowing our officers are one of the best trained police for forces in the state, if not the nation. They are poised to keep us safe during some very challenging times, and this does not happen by accident or coincidence. Thank you, Chief Abbott, for your cutting edge leadership, and thanks to all the dedicated men and women of the West Orange Police Department who have decided to make police officer their chosen profession. And finally, I would just like to uh, briefly add to uh, Councilwoman uh, Castellino's report about the downtown. Uh, I invite everyone to join me this Saturday, May 8th at one o'clock PM for a downtown walking tour beginning at 80 Main Street in the parking lot at 80 Main Street. It will last about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, depending on how long I talk. And it will uh, continue southwards from 80 Main Street towards the uh, orange border. And I, there will be 13, um, uh, 13 or more uh, specific talking points of West Orange history. And I can guarantee you that you will never look at these locations again if you come on the tour. Um, this of course is uh, free to the public. Uh, you, I would prefer that you register by signing up by sending me an email at jfagan at westorange.org. But certainly if you uh, show up, you are welcome to join us. And once again, that's this Saturday, May 8th at one o'clock PM. And thank you for listening to my long-winded report. And with that, I say good night. Thank you, Mr. Fagan. Thank you. Next, we have Joe Krakowiak. If you can follow the prompt and give us your name and address for the record, please. I'm not clear if you can hear me. Can yes, you I can. Me? Thank you. Yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Mr. Greigel, in his brief presentation on an area in need of rehabilitation at the last council meeting, appeared to say that this legal structure includes all the remedies available under the redevelopment law, except eminent domain. To me, that would seem to indicate that this designation would include public or municipal real property. And I would think uh, the corollary would be its potential sale. If I understood Mr. Greigel correctly, does that mean if the entire town was designated as an area in need of rehabilitation, the council would no longer have the option to require competitive bidding for the sale of municipal property now required under the state procurement law? In other words, the area in need of rehabilitation would allow the sale of town property without competitive bidding? That's a question. Uh, as of now, has anyone in the administration or council considered the potential for the sale of municipal property under an area in need of rehabilitation? If so, has this consideration been general or did it include specific property or properties and what are those property or properties? In any case, at least for now, pending further information, I would not be in favor of selling municipal property without competitive bidding and would respectfully request that any authorization of an area in need of rehabilitation, if this is a provision, uh, specifically in exclude the sale of any municipal property without competitive bidding. Also, I respectfully ask each council person to advise the public about what your position on this uh, issue is for competitive bidding. Uh, a second question, a second general question. What are the financial implications of such an area in need of rehabilitation? It seems to me that the decision to go forward with most projects that would add to assessed value are not contingent on a five-year tax exemption, but would most likely incentivize those doing the projects to make sure they got this tax exemption. That would seem to me to be likely, that would likely negatively impact 
the short-term increase in revenues we see annually from such projects. Given that the rehab designation has been on the books for decades, has the administration and council looked for or found any research on this issue? What does this research show and when do you plan, if the research exists, when do you plan to make this research available to residents on the town website? Uh, secondly, does the administration and council plan a study, a specific study of the potential financial impact of such an area in need of rehabilitation uh, here in the town? Uh, I know those several questions, uh, but I would appreciate your consideration and your answers. Thank you very much. Good evening. Hey, thank you. Um, before I get to Mr. Puglisi, if there is anyone else who would like to speak at this time, uh, it's using the raise your hand button located at the bottom of your screen. If you don't see it at the bottom of your screen, you can just move your mouse and uh, sometimes it disappears on you. Okay, seeing no others, uh, Mr. Puglisi, if you can follow the prompt on your screen, please. Hi, uh, this is Anthony Puglisi, uh, representing County Executive uh, DiVincenzo this evening. Um, sorry, I missed last, uh, your last meeting. I, had, uh, I haven't been able to clone myself yet. So um, when I figure that out, out, how to do that, I will do that. Um, just wanna share some information with you as always. Uh, last week, uh, last Thursday, we partnered with uh, the township, uh, Mayor Parisi, the council, um, and also St. Barnabas on a very successful food distribution program uh, at Colgate Park. It was our the, the 53rd week that we've been doing this. Uh, so that's one year and one week. Um, we had a thousand boxes of food uh, and we were able to divert some of that to uh, uh, Holy Trinity Food Pantry. Um, so that was a very successful event. Um, we will have others in the future. And if you wanna just check uh, the website, sscountynj.org uh, for those upcoming uh, sites as they become available. Um, some of you have, may have noticed that we've been uh, scaling back some of our operations at the vaccination uh, sites. Uh, by the end of May, uh, the sites at Sears, S, um, West Caldwell Tech and the Donald Payne School will be closed. Those three sites currently are only giving uh, second doses to people who had received first doses at those locations. Um, so I, I think that at, at right now we've seen the little switch, uh, which is a little different from earlier in the year. Uh, the the um, supply of the vaccine now outpaces the demand. Uh, that doesn't mean that people should get lax and, and decide not to get vaccinated. Uh, we do encourage everyone to, to get vaccinated. Um, and we also stand ready, even though we're, we're kind of downsizing or right-sizing our operation at this point, um, we, we do stand ready in case uh, some of those vaccines, uh, especially Moderna and J&J, &J, uh, become available for children ages 12 and older. Uh, and then there's also talk of a possible uh, booster shot for people who have already been vaccinated to receive later on. So. If any of those two materialize, we do stand ready to, to reopen um, those sites and, and ramp up just like we did uh, back in December. Um, another event that happened last week on Saturday, we had our uh, spring household hazardous waste collection day. Uh, it was a record event. We had uh, almost 2,200 cars pass through um, our facility, our public works facility in Cedar Grove. Uh, that's an all time record. Um, on uh, May 15th, uh, at the same location in Cedar Grove is our computer electronics event. Uh, hopefully we'll have uh, just as successful event. Um, these uh, activities help remove hazardous material from our waste stream and our, it's good for the environment because a lot of the items are either recycled and if they can't be recycled, they're disposed of in an environmentally friendly way. Uh, and finally, um, we do continue testing as always Tuesdays in Newark at the Hall of Records, um, Saturdays, Saturday mornings at our public works facility in Cedar Grove, except for May 15th, uh, because the computer and electronics recycling day is held there. 
uh, on May 15th, the, the free testing will be um, at the archery field at the South Mountain Recreation Complex. Um, that's all I have tonight. I hope everyone stays well. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. And there are no more, um, no more townsfolk raising their hands for tonight. Thank you uh, very much, Madam Moderator. This closes public comments and um, we will go through um, addressing those questions and comments that were made. Um, Mr. F uh, Fagan, thank you very much for um, highlighting the better community policing and the partnership, the pilot program and leadership that the West Orange Police Department has undertaken We've all received those reports, and I'm happy to say that um, there's very that's been very minimal need for redirection um, after reviewing um, uh, the uh, body body cam. So I'm very happy that we are in the lead um, of co um, responding. Um, it, it certainly gives me relief to understand that you know we're we're making sure that our police officers um, and first responders um, are responding appropriately to these um, calls. Um, Mr. Polisi, thank you very much for always um, making sure that we are informed and we are included in the food distribution. Um, and certainly, the, the always, as always, um, a big thank you, uh, gratitude to the county for their partnership. Uh, we, our first uh, mobile site, uh, vaccination site was able to vaccinate 260, our last vaccinated 50. And um, I'm hopeful that people are just getting the vaccines at uh, pharmacies and their doctors. And, and that's probably why the supply is um, greater than the demand. And that, that, that hopefully is more than just wishful thinking. But um, thank you to you and, and the county executive for always um, partnering with our community. Uh, Mr. Krokoviak, in response to your um, questions, the matter that's on the resolution um, this evening is to refer um, this question of in need, an area in need of rehabilitation um, to the planning board. So I don't have enough information to try to answer all of your questions at this time. That way, uh, once the planning board has commenced a study and is able to report to the council, I will have better information. But for those interested, um, there is a lot of information on the New Jersey League of Municipalities website with respect to the legislation um, that amended, um, that provided for this amendment in 2014 to be able to use the area in need of rehabilitation. Um, and it is true, like, like the um, redevelopment areas, both non-condemnation and areas um, that are condemnated, there is um, the opportunity for property transfers without bids, just like there would be in an area of redevelopment where you designate a developer, um, that is true. But it, what is also true is that all the powers of the re in rehabilitation, an area in need of rehabilitation, all of the powers of redevelopment except condemnation and long-term exceptions, which are pilots, payment in lieu of taxes, um, that is also true, that that excludes the um, pilot programs. And we'll further discuss that I've, as I've asked um, Mr. Trank um, when we get to this resolution to discuss further with us, but at this point, um, I don't have enough information to give you because we're just recommending this study to the planning board um, for them to, to make recommendations to us. Um, Councilwoman Casalino, please. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, and just to follow up, thank you, uh, uh, Councilman Kukovia for com coming on the air tonight to bring these to our attention. Um, I'm not sure, just, just one quick question though, because I'm curious too. Uh, with the competitive bidding. Does Mr. Trank, do you know the answer to, to that with our public properties? Um, would you know that off the top of your head just to put that to rest or, or not? Yeah, I'm on. Um, good evening. Um, so again, we have the ability to dispose of real property in conformance with the applicable law. Obviously an area in need of rehabilitation um, is consistent. There will never be a pilot involved as part of that. It doesn't is not provided under this law. And just like on Thompson Street, the council approved the transfer of that property so we could develop 17 low and moderate units. 
It would depend on the criteria if it's met, as council president said, and it would depend on the process. So there is nothing impermissible in a, in a disposition of real property in an area in need of rehabilitation. So as you know, this proposal after uh, Mr. Laporte evaluates whether or not the properties are over 50 years would allow all taxpayers to take advantage of a five-year phase-in of any improvements. So again, there's nothing in the designation that uh, affects negatively any aspect of the town, uh, and but, but it does allow that there could be a disposition if it was so chosen by this council of property uh, without a bidding process. But again, that would be a totally separate and independent process that would only occur in the public eye before the governing body. Thank you, Mr. Trank. Um, so, so thank you, I appreciate you, you doing that uh, at this moment. Uh, and I, I look forward to the discussion later, you're going to the, the planning department. Uh, so Mr. Puglisi, uh, thank you as usual for your updates and also the county executive and our freeholders for being such great partners through this horrible pandemic um, between you know, the food distribution, the vaccinations, um, just, just incredible. So uh, we're really, really uh, grateful of our great working relationship. Uh, I was remiss before, um, I had a meeting at the Degden House last week. It was nice to see everyone. Everyone was vaccinated. Uh, we still practice social distancing and whatnot, um, but it was great to see everyone. And uh, they've done a, a great job over there as well, uh, getting everyone, almost everyone in the building vaccinated. So um, thank, you know, we had everyone with great efforts this, this past few months. Uh, Joe Fagan. Um, Thank you uh, for the walking tour you'll be hosting on Saturday. And I'm sure there will be more in your near future because uh, they'll be in demand uh, at the farmer's market in the weeks to come. So uh, always a you know, great opportunity to hear West Orange history and you're one of the best storytellers I know. So thank you so much for volunteering your time for that endeavor. Um, we will be uh, talking about resolution 79-21. So I'm glad you did bring that up, Mr. Fagan. Um, you know, that will continue our agreement um, to the end of the year for our police department. And, and being that we have the time, um, council president, I, you know, I just have to go on and on about our police department because you know, you put on the news every night and you see what's happening around the nation and it's just so depressing and horrifying. And for years, our police department has been ahead of so many different situations. Um, they were one of the first with the community policing units, the bike units, um, going back to Sergeant Morella and when the world was in, going in a different direction, hopefully we'll never come back with the active shooter drills that we had to do um, You know, with Essex Green and Liberty Middle School. So always going above and beyond. And I was gonna, I, I noted in the resolution um, when we got to it, but I might as well be that Mr. Fagan said it now. I just want the, the public to realize with this agreement, the, pro, the uh, program objectives uh, you know, uh, are to expand the police department's mental health training, encourage collaboration between local police and behavioral health services, enhance partnerships with community care coordination services, improve general community relations and increase access to mental health services, reduce need for force of force by utilizing prevention, intervention, and treatment. And um, you know, just wonderful work they've been doing to see this continue to the end of the year is so great for our community. And I, I thank Chief Abbott and to all our, uh, our police officers who have brought this to our community. Um, thank you, Council President. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilwoman Casalino. Councilwoman McCartney. Uh, thank you. I also wanted to say thank you to Anthony Puglisi for his continued commitment to our community. Um, so much appreciated. Uh, our former council colleague, Joe Krakowiak, Thank you for your questions. I know uh, Councilman Rutherford asked similar questions when this was presented to us. 
um, tomorrow night. I didn't mention that tomorrow night, May 5th, is the next planning board meeting. So all of this information will be forwarded to the planning board. And you know, I don't know if we'll see it as soon as June, but uh, I will I'll make that announcement as soon as I know it's on our agenda to um, come forward and ask these same questions. And I wanted to thank Joe Fagan. Also, Joe mentioned uh, the police initiatives. And as Councilwoman Castellino just said, our resolution that's on tonight for the Mental Health Association, continuing that partnership with Essex and Morris. Um, in the resolution itself, it says that this is a groundbreaking relationship yeah. with Mental Health Association and Essex and Morris, with Essex and Morris. And, but it's not only that, because that of course helps our police officer and our residents, but our police department have taken other initiatives like the Take Me Home program, um, helping residents uh, that need assistance, the Blue Angel program, Operation Hope for uh, residents that uh, need treatment. And of course, this Mental Health Association partnership that uh, I hope we will be able to continue. So thank you for all that you do. I commend the police department as well. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman McCarthy. And I wanted to thank you for all of your information about the League of Municipalities. So oh. again, another resource and a lot of information that we could read up on ourselves for the uh, area need of rehabilitation. Thank you. Absolutely, you're welcome. Councilman Rutherford. Uh, thank you, Council President. I would like to, to echo the sentiments of my council colleagues with regards to the police. Um, I am extremely excited about the partnership with regard to mental health professionals. Um, and I do think we have an opportunity here to set the standard for policing, certainly in a diverse community. I do want to warn us that uh, success is a double-edged sword. We've been doing well. We don't want to rest on our laurels. There's still more to do, uh, particularly with diversity amongst our police officer ranks. Um, so yes, let's, you know, let's celebrate these wins. Uh, they certainly are important. Uh, the community is certainly proud, uh, but let's also continue to look for ways that we can improve. Uh, Mr. Krakowiak, thank you for your comments. Thank you, Mr. Fagan and Mr. Puglisi as well. Uh, I will certainly look to find out some of those answers. And I just wanted to follow up on what uh, Councilwoman Casalino just asked. She got a little clarification from Mr. Trink regarding the competitive bidding. Uh, Mr. Krakowiak asked if that could be excluded. Is that is that possible? And then you know, I'm sure we'll have some some time to kind of work through these things, but I would like to know, you know, one, is that possible to exclude um, that aspect of it from the area in need of rehabilitation? And then two, if we did, what would the impact be? Does it somehow, is there some kind of a downside to the administration uh, with regard to how they dispose of properties? Uh, does it tie their hands with regard to anything else they're trying to accomplish uh, with the real property that we own? Um, that's just my follow-up, and um, Mr. Trink and I can, can instead of taking time tonight, we can communicate uh, via email about it, but I did want to get it on the record. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rutherford, and I'm sure we can discuss that when, um, when we discuss the resolution. Uh, Councilwoman Williams. Thank you, Council President. At some point, we're going to have to reverse order on, on a couple of occasions <laughs> so that um, there's the possibility for my questions to be asked before they're already answered. Um, but at any rate, I want to thank um, those who came and gave us their time tonight um, to be present. And um, all my questions were already answered by my council colleagues. So thank you. And that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman Williams. Uh, Madam Clerk. Okay, um, the consent agenda, approval of minutes of previous meeting, April 20th, 2021, public meeting and executive session. Consent. consent. Report of township officers, none. Reading of petitions and communications and bids. West Orange library board resolution supporting build america's libraries act s 127 and hr 1581 is there a consent, consent. no consent bills are there any questions on the bills consent consent resolutions um council president are any resolutions being pulled this evening uh, 
Yes, I know that um, Councilman Rutherford wanted to pull 8521, um, which is the professional service agreement for with uh, Joseph Wenzel Esquire, um, item F, I'm sorry, item L. Oh, I'm sorry, I wrote over it. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Um, and I wanted to put pull item N, which is 8721, authorizing professional service agreement with Kenneth D. McPherson, um, who is the attorney for the planning board. Okay. And I know that um, Councilwoman Casalino did have um, questions. Did you want to pull to discuss, um, Councilwoman Casalino? Um, I thought, I, well, if anybody has other questions, like I wanted Mr. Gross to explain 78-21 for the public, um, whether it needs to be pulled, I'll leave that to your discretion. And uh, I had questions on 91-21 with process. Okay. Um, so, so let's, um, Mr. Gross, can you um, discuss all right, so those are gonna be pulled and then we have questions on, on a couple of items and then we'll um, approve the consent agenda. Um, Mr. Gross, can you discuss the 7621, which is the resolution authorizing um, Phillips uh, Price Greigel Laney Hughes LLC to prepare and present the comprehensive amendment to the downtown redevelopment plan, what that entails? Yes, thank you. Right. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Council President. Uh, this is a resolution that authorizes uh, the township planner to uh, take a look at the redevelopment zone again. There were, over the years, uh, because of the different machinations of the, of the plans, a number of, of properties that were originally included in a plan and still is included in the zone uh, fell out of a plan. So uh, we wanted to have him look at all the properties uh, within the zone, see whether or not there was a need to either uh, to, to look at th those properties that no longer are in a plan and see whether they needed to be. And that's what this is about. Okay, um, thank you for that explanation. Did my uh, council colleagues have any um, questions on that? Any follow-up questions? Councilwoman Casalino? Yeah, Mr. Gross, what what is the time frame on that? Uh, how long is the, the process to do that exercise? Yeah, I, I do. Can I just jump in there, uh, if I may, Mr. Gross? Um, it, it's it's not just the property in the zone. I think, Mr. Gross, from the discussions you and I, it, it's the uses. Uh, as everyone in the council is aware, um, there have been certain uh, discussions uh, about additional permitted uses in the redevelopment zone. So, I think short answer is the mayor is. Uh, made it clear this has to be done immediately. The mayor has uh, meetings all, it's literally been in meetings nonstop. So we would expect that Ms. Raggle's re uh, recommendation, and it goes to the planning board first, um, will hopefully be available within the next 20 days. I think that's okay. certainly the mayor's uh, goal. I, I agree with Mr. Trank. I apologize if I, what, if I didn't explain fully. Uh, and by virtue of you know, um, adhering a property to a plan, it's inherent that you would define the use of those properties. So uh, as well as getting any properties adjacent or around it, if it makes sense to, to, to look at it at, the, at this point in time. So I apologize if I wasn't completely clear. Thank you, Mr. Gross. Uh, Councilman Rutherford, I, had, I saw your hand up and then it was down. Yeah, I just, that Mr. Gross and uh, Mr. Trent covered it. it, it I, I believe this is also looking at um, the properties that are immediately adjacent to this area, so that, that that was my clarification. It's not just the properties that are already in it. And I could be wrong, but I think it's some properties that are adjacent as well. I think I think that's what Mr. Gross was saying that at, at when and there have been machinations. And to my council colleagues, I, it's not the um, simplest task, but I did um, read through all of the machinations for the uh, downtown redevelopment plan. One report alone is 126 pages, and 
I wanted to make sure that I was familiar um, as we enter this discussion and for the public to understand what we're discussing. Um, it's no secret that none of us are happy with the look of our downtown and the um, accessibility. And we are having discussions as, as um, Councilman Rutherford um, mentioned a few uh, meetings ago. And so those discussions are um, what prompted this um, this uh, review, if you will, to make sure that those properties that were initially in the area in need of redevelopment zones were either still there or um, if they're not, if they fell off, um, figure out if they need to be put back in and then um, identify the use. So it's, it's extensive, um, <laughs> uh, but certainly um, uh, worthwhile, um, yeah. a worthwhile read. So as we move along in these conversations, we have um, context of history. Um, to understand what we're looking at. So I'm, I'm very excited about the opportunity to even have these discussions with my council colleagues and, and um, the administration. Um, so thank you all for that. Um, so that, that's why this resolution is here. And it is time sensitive, just to be clear, because there have been discussions and those discussions do have, um, are of, of a time sensitive nature. Um, and I look forward to the time where we can wrap this all up and, and, and uh, see a different downtown. Um, thank you uh, for the questions and the answers. Um, also, um, Mr. Trank, I'm gonna put you back on the spot for 7721, which is the area in need of rehabilitation. And um, a question was asked uh, before with respect that I realized I didn't answer it with respect to have there been any discussions of any transference of, uh, of properties considered or discussed? Um, no, uh, as far as I'm aware, no, none with me. Um, I, and my council colleagues, um, you know, they can, they can answer that for themselves, but as far as I know, they are not. Um, I, I have been looking at the other districts that were mentioned that are included in the area um, in need of rehabilitation, uh, Maplewood and the other districts that uh, were shared with us. I have pulled some of the uh, some of their ordinances to compare as we go um, down this road. Um, and to Councilman Rutherford's question, um, Mr. Trent, can you, because this is statute, I don't know if we're able to exclude parts of the statute, can you clarify that more specifically when Councilman uh, Rutherford asked if we can exclude the property transfers without bidding? The answer is it, it you create the this, as you're saying correctly, Council President, the, the um, area, if it meets the criteria, and that's what Mr. Lepore will prepare a report and the planning board will consider and then it will come back to this council. If it meets the area, uh, then, then it applies and anybody making, and again, keep in mind as I think that, uh, I think Councilman Rutherford asked the right question a couple meetings ago. He said, why would anybody be opposed to this? Uh, because if you're encouraging people to invest in their property and you're giving basically people who do that investment the ability to phase in their added assessment over five years, then, uh, it seems that it's the right time and the right place and the right incentive. So there's no way to exclude powers from the statute. But what I do wanna make clear is this does not allow, there will never be a situation where there would ever be a transfer of any property in this town without it coming before the governing body. It's like, this does not allow us to go in the back room and transfer a title even to an abnormal or an undersized lot without it coming before the governing body. So it does not create some super ability uh, at all. All it does is designate whatever the appropriate area is, is as an area in need of rehabilitation. And just like you made a decision because of the greater good that Tompkins should be uh, transferred to the Alpert Group to develop affordable and low, low and moderate income housing, that's a decision you approved on notice to the entire town in public. So, um, so, so it'll all be before you always. And, and not speaking on behalf of my council colleagues, I, I can assure you that I am in no position to want to, um, or interested in giving any township property away as, 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 um, might be assumed. Um, 
do any of my other council colleagues have additional questions um, for this resolution? And again, for the public, this resolution is asking the planning board um, to review before the council considers. And I see that there is a hand up in the public. Unfortunately, public um, comment is, is over and closed. So please do feel free to email the council um, your questions. Councilman Rutherford, did you, did you have, I thought I saw your hand up. No, okay. Um, any other questions from my council colleagues? No, okay, thank you. Um, and then the other question, um, Councilwoman Casalino, you wanted to um, have something discussed. Yeah, I just wanted Mr. Gross to go over the 78-21, uh, you know, the application to the local finance board that it's just preparing us if he could make a statement. Sure. Uh, this is a resolution authorizes uh, an application to the local finance board um, pursuant to statutes in reference to the executive drive project. Um, as, as we've always discussed, um, the particular project has as part of it um, non recourse bonds that would need to be approved by the local finance board non recourse bonds or bonds that that the are not general obligations of the town and the, 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 the town is not responsible to repay should there be, in the worst case scenario, some type of a default, it would not be paid by township taxpayers. Um, so this is, uh, you know, part of the, I'll, I'll, I'll term it, you know, housekeeping that's required to move project, move forward with the uh, Essex Drive project as approved by the council. Thank you, Mr. Gross. Thank you, thank Mr. You, Council President. Uh, thank you. Do any of my council call, uh, Councilman Rutherford, I see your hand up. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, Mr. Gross, just for clarity, uh, you know, both for myself and, and the public, while the township is not required to repay in the event um, from, you know, it's not a general obligation bond, it's not going to come out of our taxes if that bond for some reason is not repaid. But help me clarify, both for myself and the community, how it is repaid. It is my understanding that those bonds are repaid in this particular case from revenues that are generated from the rents from the project. It, it, help me understand that part. It's, it's repaid from um, the um, financial contribution uh, the, the made by the project to the township. And then the township then forwards the money on to pay down, to pay off the bonds. If, the, if for some reason, uh, there is no income that comes from the project in order to a certain level of income that comes from the project, uh, the town is not required to pay off the bonds. Right, but that the, the payment that is coming to us for these bonds comes out of the gross payment in lieu of taxes, is that right? It is a portion of the gross payment. So our payment in lieu of taxes will be decreased by the amount of, the re of this uh, bond. Yeah, and, and that's, that is part of all of our projections. We've included those payments uh, in our projections. Uh, what, what this non-recourse issue is that if those, if those projections are completely wrong and, and or there's some disaster that be, befalls the community and, and it, the rents can't be paid, the township taxpayers are not on the hook to pay it off. There's only going to be paid off if there is revenue that comes from the project. Right, but my, yeah, my, I'm just for clarity, what I was trying to get at is that it does, all, it is it is a, uh, a decrease, it, it decreases the amount, at least in the early years, the payment in lieu of taxes that we otherwise would receive if we did not have this four and a half million dollars. Well, well, well that's, that's not accurate because yeah. if we weren't able to do this, we, the project wouldn't be built and therefore we would never receive those funds. So the, the funds that are paying for this off are funds that are anticipated within the structure of the, of the finances that, that we've provided to you and, and anticipated within the project. The, so, so it's not that, you know, it, it, it's not that we would, if not for this, we would receive more money. If not for this, the project would not be built um, because it required 
th this is part of the requirement and the financing of the entire project. So it is a mechanism that, is, that the legislature has put forth that allows the municipality to um, participate in a manner in a project such as this without putting its taxpayers at risk. No, I, I understand that completely. And I understand your logic uh, regarding whether or not the project would be built. I'm just trying to make sure we're clear that the repayment of this bond comes out of the payment in lieu of taxes. And that's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can, um, okay. Yes, Mr. Council President, I do want to add three things of clarification. Number one, uh, this was already approved in the financial agreement that was approved by the council by a four to one vote. So I do want to make that very clear that there's nothing in a uh, resolution uh, before you tonight that changes the, uh, the finances or the financial agreement that was approved, number one. Number two, part of this money goes uh, to uh, paying for the infrastructure, to paying for the dog, two acre dog park, and for paying for the new library. So those are significant uh, public improvements that the uh, mayor has stressed from the beginning. Uh, and finally, this application uh, be, uh, in the first go around did go to the, the local finance board, which is required, and it was unanimously approved uh, by the state of New Jersey. Uh, so uh, there is nothing out of kilter with the numbers or with the economics of uh, this request to the local finance board uh, from uh, a statewide perspective. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Trank. Um, any of my other council colleagues have questions on this resolution? No, okay, thank you. Um, and the last um, discussion before we um, move forward with um, the consent agenda is I would like um, a discussion on resolution 9121, which is the resolution approving concession agreement between Kemper Sports Management Inc. and RBG Hospitality Group. Um, um, Mr. Trank? Yes, I would be um, quite pleased to. So um, uh, one of the aspects, uh, and again, I'm not sure if Mr. Russo is uh, in the audience or a panelist. Um, so one of the aspects that the um, uh, Township Council has asked is if uh, we could see an enhanced ability with regard to uh, food and beverage at this site. Um, as we all know, last year, because of COVID, there was extremely limited uh, food and beverage available uh, at Rock Spring for obvious reasons, and, and uh, therefore it was almost negligible. The year before, there was a uh, Kemper's Force that did the food and beverage did approximately 320,000 of its million 750 in food and beverage and basically broke even or lost money on it. Um, and, and Kemper, from that point on, as a result of various communications from the council and from the community, uh, we've been, been endeavoring to speak with Kemper about how to kind of, for lack of a better word, up that game. We did put an RFP out. We, we actually um, got Kemper to consent we put an RFP out, uh, a, a number of people on the council, but certainly the mayor and the administration uh, met with some incredible restaurateurs, uh, including David Burke, uh, who formerly ran uh, the Orange Lawn uh, Tennis Club Food and Beverage uh, that, that ceased to operate after COVID. But we also spoke to um, a, a restaurant legend from this town, Francis Schott, uh, who uh, runs Stage Left and Catherine, Lombar Catherine Lombardi's uh, in New Brunswick. The bottom line is, after we put that RFP out, we had zero, literally no responses that uh, came back. Uh, and they probably were smarter than all of us because it would have taken effect during COVID and they didn't even know about COVID. Uh, we, we, we put it out in December of 19 to, to take effect. So the short answer is, we've not had any luck getting an independent concession. Having said that, and one of the excellent things that the Economic Development Commission that's been revived did is they went out and they found some excellent restaurateurs who have some roots here in the town. Um, and uh, basically they're prepared beginning Memorial Day uh, to enter into this, uh, what we call a subcontract or a concessionaire agreement with Kemper Sports Management, where they uh, will put uh, their blood, sweat and actual money into certain improvements 
uh, at the club on the patio and on the area adjacent to the patio um, so that uh, members of the public and golfers, but not just golfers, uh, will have an ability uh, to access food and beverage at Rock Spring. And, and that is exactly what uh, this resolution before you tonight does. Our only involvement in this is we have a right to approve the concession agreement. Um, and, and that is what you have before you tonight. They posted the insurance. They've shown they have the credentials. Uh, and Kemper, most importantly, which is responsible under the management company for that operation, um, has approved uh, RBG. Uh, I keep thinking of Justice uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but uh, they've yes. approved RBG <laughs> Hospitality Group LLC. Uh, and uh, that group uh, has shown an enthusiasm and an ability. And this is literally, for lack of a better word, a six month kind of trial run uh, that uh, we'll see how it works out. And uh, hopefully, It'll be successful for the community and for RBG. Uh, and uh, that is the premise of what's before you tonight. The reason it's limited to just six months, as you know, our contract with Kemper ends at the end of this year. Uh, we anticipate uh, going out on an RFP uh, for a new agreement um, sometime this summer. Uh, but obviously Kemper could not give an, a, a contract longer than its agreement. And RBG, to their credit, agreed uh, to take this opportunity now. And, and we're excited and hopeful that this will be successful and the community will, um, uh, will support it. Thank you, um, Mr. Trank. And for the community who is listening, the name of the restaurant is The Rock 1925, as it was founded in 1925. And just to give some background, I did ask um, uh, what the experience of these restaurant tours um, are, and they have um, managed and um, Sofritos in New York, the Black Iron Burger, Guy and Gillard, uh, Mercedes House Market in New York. These are all New York restaurants um, and food establishments places. The uh, flavor of India and real Usha sweet and snacks. So I am very excited about the opportunity that they present. Um, for Rock Spring because to our disappointment, no one after the RFP wanted to do this. So I am very happy. And I just wanna make clear that the Economic Development Commission unfortunately has not yet met. However, the chair who has been appointed does have a relationship um, and was able to reach out and seek interest. I'm looking forward to as soon as Mr. Gross says that we have a Zoom account available for the commission to use that we're able to have a meeting um, sooner than later. So um, hopefully I'll, I'll have that so that we can set up a meeting for the Economic Development Commission to come together. But at this point, this is a resident in town who, who um, reached out to some associates and, and found um, this group of brothers who are coming into town. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I know Councilwoman Casalino, you had a question in regards to the contract. Um, yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm looking for it. Go ahead. Thank, thank you, Council President. And, and uh, thank you, Mr. Trank. Uh, ecstatic to hear about their experiences in, this, in New York City, uh, bringing an experienced restaurant tour in to Rock Spring is something we've been waiting for. So uh, thank all who have been involved with those efforts. Um, look forward to uh, visiting. Uh, now, question number one, were there was mention or is there gonna be any um, upgrades to the facility prior to the opening of this, Mr. Trank? Cosmetic. Cosmetic. cosmetic like Pers cosmetic. Yeah, new furniture on the patio. Uh, you know, again, no one's going to make a vast capital improvement Absolutely. for six months, but they really are. Um, and the council president and I were up there last night. They are working uh, mm -hmm. and subject to tonight's uh, approval uh, to do what I'll call basically upgrading the, the vibe or the feel of it. But uh, uh, they're going to have they're, they're, they're being creative, uh, you know, recognizing that every restaurateur wants to take everything down and put it in their own mantra they're working within the confines of the existing structure and then this contract pulls through uh with our kemper contract in regards to uh the township receiving a percentage of the profits well in fact as i pointed out because the council president and i have talked about it extensively this may actually lead to 
a, a smaller amount because as you'll yeah. see in the concession agreement, Kemper gets a percent, is getting a percent of theirs. And we get yeah. a 5% plus 50% of net profits of Kemper's money. So uh, I, I don't know how the math is gonna end up in the, in the end. Um, again, Kemper didn't make much money on food and beverage to begin with. So uh, the short answer is, it'll have a slight impact on the overall uh, gross revenues that we get 5% on, so. Okay, and, and just to go um, back to the contract on page three in regards to, because we have put this in the first contract with Kemper, the township events, that the township uh, may hold up to four events in good faith upon special discounted rates that may be applicable for town uh, uh, for township sponsored events is you know I like to see a process with that um, I also with them getting started and hopefully with people wanting to get out with COVID uh, I'm just curious to see how we're going to monitor that um, who makes that discretion does that come to um, does that mayor take take care the, of that the mayor. Do, are in we aware past, of? In, in the past, the mayor has done it. And as you know, it's been extremely limited. Um, you know, um, so um, I, I don't know the exact events it's occurred in the past. We don't want to do anything to limit the success. And that's one. Exactly. We, yeah. So all I can say is it's been limited. It, uh, what I will tell you is as of a couple of weeks ago, they already had 31 uh, tournaments of different sizes, yeah. obviously that were scheduled. So obviously that provides kind of a built-in, you know, foundation uh, and will help the, hopefully this operator uh, get a jump start and help the overall, um, uh, you know, feedback on the, on the, on the club experience. So. Because yeah, I wouldn't uh, want to clo close it on a, on the weekend where they could be making oh, no, potentially no, no, no. some, some very nice income. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I will, just, although we're entitled to four events, no, you know, no, no. like as you said, I like to see the success of it. Yeah. Uh, number one, number two, is it so? Now, as far as the concession area, it's going to be the they'll be doing uh, obviously um, uh, golf tournaments, the the food for that, the uh, the concession stand, I, um, the grill room, um, um, private parties. Is going to be is the dining room going to be open to the public mm -hmm. at any point? Again, I think the short answer is yes. I think the patio is the area. The patio, I think what the council president and I saw was it's going to be mainly the patio in the adjacent, what I'll call bar area. Um, okay. I think that's the primary. I'm sure when there's a golf tournament event, it'll be in the bigger room that you're used to, which is on the, what I'll call the New York side of it. But that would be for a larger event. But I, I, I do want to assure you, there's no way Kemper will let them close the club at any point when there can be golf operations. That would be contradictory to the T sheet apparently fills up here the night it's open. So there, this would only be as, an, as a uh, ancillary to a golf tournament, like on a Monday, as you're used to, as you're aware of, or in, in hours when there is not golfing. Well, my recommendation, if they're going to be offering a la carte dinner, is my because what happened the last time is if it rained the dining room was closed so which is crazy so I would like to see if they're going to offer a la carte even if it's only three or four nights a week that they they be there for the nights that they say they're going to open so the public knows that they're there because it was um, you can't potentially uh, improve your business if you know a, a customer comes and, and then the dining room shut because it, it started raining that night. So I just like to see if we are open to the public with a dining posted times and set hours and that would actually enhance their success. Thank you, um, Councilwoman Castellino. I, I do agree that we, we need to discuss a process because with every other public facility um, that the township um, owns, we have a permitting process. So I, 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 it's not the, the time for that discussion here, but certainly want to visit revisit that. Um, and thank yeah, you. and I'd like to be a part of that too, Councilwoman. Absolutely, Council. absolutely, Thanks. thank you. Um, you can take the lead on that actually. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman Rutherford, I see you. 
I was just going to echo that sentiment. We certainly need a process and we don't want to limit the success, but we also uh, don't want to encourage um, political uh, uh, interference in, in that kind of a process. So having it all written down, agreed upon, upfront, in, you know, before any of that kind of stuff happens, I think eliminates that possibility. And, and I want to assure you, to the extent anyone is suggesting that, in the, that that has never occurred. The only event I can even imagine, and Ms. Rose probably knows specific, was the Morgan event that we did to salute that young man and his family. So I am not aware of any other opportunities. Again, I, I, the only other one I could think even fathom might be a senior event. But I, I can tell you, it has been less than a handful. There were probably only the Morgan event last year. And I don't even know that they were done at any uh, again, so we can certainly get you that information yeah. when it's occurred. I can assure you, the mayor believes in in the competition, and he wants it because it goes to the bottom line of his town. He wants to see the, and, and we saw it in 2020. So there's been zero political interference ever, and I, I'm sure no one's suggesting that uh, tonight. No. Yeah, just wanted to make sure that, that that's not what I was suggesting. I was okay. just trying to make sure that okay, that thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, um, Councilman Rutherford, and I certainly agree with your sentiment. Um, I know I said that was the last question, but I just turned the page, and I actually do have uh, Mr. Gross or Mr. Trank. Um, can you please just talk about Resolution 9421, authorizing Phillips um, Greigel, I won't say the whole name, um, with respect to performing certain land use and consulting services with regard to pending tax appeals involving yes. Essex County Country Club? So again, um we are in the midst of various tax appeals, and obviously to determine the highest and best use, which is the criteria to determine the proper assessments, the issue of the uh, potential, most of the golf courses are zoned, as you know, residential. Uh, and so part of what the uh, Mr. Greigel and his firm will do is do an analysis that Mr. Blau can use in attempting to defend uh, the township's uh, assessments. So that's what the uh, 94-21 is about. Okay. Do my council colleagues have any additional questions on that on that resolution? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Madam Clerk, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I see Councilman Rutherford's hand just went up. Uh, we didn't uh, go through 85-21. 85, 20. Oh, there we go. They were, that one was pulled, Councilman. Oh, sorry. Okay. You yeah. want to 85 you. and 87. So we'll get Thank to you. those. But I just want to do a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Uh, okay. I don't know if I was second. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The consent agenda is implemented. And Councilman Rutherford, you pulled resolution 85-21, resolution yeah. authorizing the execution of a professional services agreement with Joseph Wenzel to serve as the township's municipal prosecutor for the period of January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021 at a rate of $1,000 per week. Uh, so I, I pulled that not to pick on Mr. Wenzel. Um, we have several professional services agreements uh, before us tonight. And um, I just chose that one because I believe in, I believe we've had um, one uh, African-American prosecutor. I could be wrong, but that is my understanding. And so I'm curious as to the process to designate how we are awarding these professional services agreement. And is there included in that process um, any requirements uh, to uh, consider diverse candidates um, and if there is, what is the outreach that we currently go through? I don't know who is best situated to answer that question, but I would like an answer. Well, I'll answer it in part because obviously I fully agree in, in every aspect of the um, of your statement that we are always looking for the, the best qualified um, uh, candidates. Uh, we obviously pay uh, reduced uh, rates in all respects. Uh, you are correct uh, that I know of uh, at least one now sitting judge, um, Grace Spencer, who uh, was an assembly person, uh, served uh, uh, as, as an excellent prosecutor uh, in our township. Uh, and again, Mr. Kayser may recall other prosecutors, but 
we always, when we do have a process, post it. Um, there are some unfilled positions tonight that we are still looking for candidates. As you can appreciate, when especially when you get to some of the boards or the public advocate, uh, the rates are extremely reduced. We, you know, the mayor has always tried to um, uh, obtain candidates who live in town, um, um, and so. I would encourage any qualified, especially young attorneys uh, who are interested in getting involved uh, to step forward on any level. We do post these positions. Um, I'm a former president of the Eskandi Bar and proud of that. And so we constantly make outreach on every level uh, through uh, the Bar Association, uh, which is uh, obviously a diverse organization. But we welcome any member of the council, any member of the public, and any young lawyer or not so young lawyer um, uh, like me to make recommendations. Uh, we just want quality candidates who will serve uh, the community uh, frequently at incredibly uh, reduced rates. So um, so I welcome any of that input on any level, uh, Councilman Rutherford. So uh, thank you, Mr. Trink. And, and just to be clear, so we don't have a formal process of, of trying to recruit diverse candidates I understand that we're open to them and we do use some of the um, existing networking opportunities out there, but there's no direct outreach uh, for candidates of color. Is that correct? Well, again, if, if, if you have specific outreaches that you recommend or that you're aware of could be successful, mm -hmm. um, we, we welcome it. So again, I know the Garden State Bar Association. I know, I again, as president of the bar, I work for, with all of uh, the bar association. So we can certainly redouble our efforts. There's never, um, there's never enough outreach. So we can certainly more formalize it. And I, I welcome your input in that process. I would want to note with regard to Mr. Wenzel specifically that um, uh, he has served his community with distinction. He's a West Orange resident. He was formerly our public defender. Um, we, we are extremely sensitive to who serves as our township prosecutor. Uh, and our municipal judges, and that because, as you well know, the municipal court is uh, frequently, and we have we happen to have now an incredible municipal court clerk, uh, Ms. Bowers. Um, so we look for input from all sides of it, so that our our uh, system of justice, not just within the police department, but within the municipal court, um, is uh, fair, just, uh, and. Uh, um, uh, as diverse as possible. So again, uh, we can more we can do as good a job as 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 humanly possible. And I welcome input all the time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Trank. I'll give you some input while we're here. The Hispanic Bar Association, the Black, the Association of Black Women Lawyers, and obviously you said the Garden State. My husband is a uh, former past president of the Garden State Bar Association, um, and and I do understand the challenges with the salary um, that, that is on a municipal level, but certainly want to see that effort. Um, I echo Mr. Uh, Councilman Rutherford's um, statements. Um, yes, uh, Councilwoman Williams. I just wanted to just make a statement in reference to the outreach for, for diversity candidates. And I wanted to say that sometimes it is not necessarily the outreach um, but, it, but it is the salary that is attached to that position and opportunity um, that prohibits diversity candidates from being interested. And I know that directly um, because I've had com communication um, with various officials who have served in the past. And, and that is quite frankly, the limitation in recruitment. It, it's just they have an opportunity to make more money in other opportunities. And, and so that, that is what is more prohibitive um, than, than the outreach opportunity. Certainly, certainly you have to agree on the salary as I just commented, but um, if we're not making any outreach efforts, then we're, we're, we're limiting ourselves even further than just the challenge of the, the salary that is offered. Um, so thank you for that. Um, but, but I will commit council president, because you're absolutely correct, that certainly between now and the end of the year, we will reach out to each and every one of those associations and try to get uh, uh, candidates to step forward. So I'm, I'm, Thank you. I think it's an excellent, I, it's an excellent opportunity. 
Thank you. Just one last thing. Let's do that across the board. I mean, we have a very diverse community, not just with the one that we highlighted today with regard to legal services, um, but let's let's do that across the board. I think we get better outcomes when we um, enlarge the pool. Thanks. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Yes. Is there a motion to approve uh, Resolution 8521? So moved. So moved. Okay. Councilwoman Casalino? Yes. Councilwoman McCartney? Yes. Councilman Rutherford? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Council President Matute Brown. Yes. Okay. And resolution 8721, resolution authorizing a professional services agreement with Kenneth McPherson to serve as the planning board attorney for the township for the period of January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021, at the rate specified in the agreement was pulled by Council President Matute Brown. Thank you. Um, and, and I pulled this. I also voted against this contract last year. Um, this year, uh, because of what I believe to be someone who um, is, is not well experienced, particularly since they are um, out of law school. And this is coming from a mother of a daughter who is five years out of law school. And five years is, is, is great time for some experience, but right out of law school is, is quite concerning. There's a lot to learn. Um, and, and I'm not saying that uh, Mr. McPherson does not have the ability to learn. My concern um, is, is actually a little greater this time with this contract because we have, as we all know, a lot of um, future developments um, on the horizon. And I would feel um, much more comfortable with someone who has greater experience in this arena. I am sure he has mentors as, as, as first, um, well, he's no longer a first year um, law graduate or, or attorney, but um, I pulled it so that I can vote against it because I, I would feel more comfortable with somebody who has more experience. Yes, and, uh, Mr. Yeah, Chang. Thank you very much, Council President. And again, with full, due, uh, with full respect to uh, your position, um, all I can say is uh, Mr. McPherson uh, has and continues uh, to perform uh, uh, exemplary, uh, specifically as you are, as everyone is aware, uh, we are being attacked on all levels, uh, specifically by one uh, plaintiff, one individual who's funding a tsunami of litigation, uh, which is affecting this town. And Mr. McPherson, as recently as Monday of this week, today's Tuesday, so yesterday at 9.15 a.m., we had a Zoom hearing before the Honorable uh, Judge Gardner on uh, the latest attack by that individual about this council's determination uh, as to executive drive. And um, uh, that plaintiff is seeking to take discovery and depose uh, five people and seek volumes of documents. And Mr. McPherson, who is now with the firm of Porzio, Bromberg and Newman, uh, uh, successfully, along with obviously uh, my, my office and uh, the uh, property owners uh, council, um, got uh, was successful in Judge Gardner not only denying any further discovery and saying the record is the record that was before the planning board in November of last year and the town council in December of last year, uh, but that the, that the, that the because of the $3.1 million that's at risk, that uh, the judge agreed to expedite the entire matter. So I, re I respect what you're saying, uh, but uh, uh, as you well know, this is a $3,500 a year stipend. Um, so as Councilwoman Williams said, um, you, you're the, the best people to get, in my experience, and, and, and uh, Assemblyman McKeon started uh, as planning board attorney, uh, then, then my spouse, who's now retired uh, as a judge, served as counsel of the planning board, uh, and neither one of them, when they went in those positions, uh, had any vast land use experience. Uh, and I, I certainly am, am biased, but I can say they, they both performed admirably in those positions and continued on in their careers. Uh, and, and, and I can say Mr. McPherson is doing that right now. So, um, but for a sea change in, in the rate structure, which certainly with the uh, burden uh, of the fiscal nature it is not a likely recommendation from the administration, um, the enthusiasm, the energy, the ability uh, to research um, uh, uh, and, and listen uh, is the paramount responsibility 
of being a planning uh, or a zoning board attorney. And, and Mr. McPherson, at least as far as the law department is concerned, uh, we strongly believe that he is serving in that capacity uh, and, and, and recommend him for reappointment. Thank you. Certainly, thank you, Mr. Um, Trank, for um, that um, update with respect to his presentation yesterday before um, the courts. Certainly always willing to listen myself and always willing to accept um, opinions that are diverse from mine. If um, yesterday's results were favorable and he argued before um, the court that that is, um, you know, certainly does does give me pause um, to reconsider. So um, Councilwoman McCartney. Thank you, Council President. You're welcome. So Richard just uh, Mr. Trank just gave us a timeline of the past few months and on the planning board, I can give you a timeline of the past year that Mr. McPherson has served and it has been with a professional excellence, um, so receptive and responsive and respectful to the members and to everyone that gives testimony. So I wholeheartedly support um, his energy, his youth, uh, and uh, and what and the experience that he has shown has shown this past year. Thank you, Councilman McCartney, for that. Um, okay, uh, Madam Clerk. Yes. Is there a motion to approve Resolution eighty-seven dash twenty-one? So moved. Second. Okay. Councilwoman Casalino. Yes. Councilwoman McCartney. Yes. Councilman Rutherford. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Council President Matute Brown. Mr. Trank is quite persuasive. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. I appreciate Motion it. is carried. Council President, we do have a an executive session on the agenda. I don't know if you wanted to enter into that now. Yes. Um, okay, so I need a motion to enter into executive session. So moved. Is there second. a second? Okay. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Um, Aye. Aye. Any any opposed? Okay, the motion is carried. Are we really coming back to vote on anything? I think we could have wrapped up our meeting and then gone into executive session. Um, I didn't know if there was anything on for um, new business. Nothing else. I did wanna um, follow up with Mr. Trek. Is he still here? Did he come back? He is not on camera. He is still in the meeting. He's just not on camera and he's unmuted. I'm uh, not muted. I mean, or he is muted. Oh no. No, he's muted. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna send him a little note to ask him to start his uh Okay, thank you. What are we waiting for? I, I wanted to ask Mr. Trank about an ordinance um, that's pending um, the first reading. I want I want a status on it. Okay. Hi, Mr. Trank. I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, that's okay. No, no, not at all. I know that we discussed, um, and I discussed it with the mayor as well as um, uh, Mark Moon. Um, where are we with respect to the ordinance on the um, cannabis? Uh, um, Ordinance. You you're muted, or or is that me? You're muted. I can't hear him. You just have to raise your volume, Richard. That was to mute the music. I, I heard him before, and then I just didn't hear him. He lowered the no, volume. He, no, 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 no. It's he, we did hear him before. We're not able to hear him right now. Yeah, he just has to readjust his volume. Okay, no, is that got... better? I apologize. Thank you. That's better. Um, so uh, again, you've been incredibly proactive on this council president and um, uh, the mayor has identified certain uh, uh, properties in this. So I think the mayor wanted us to have a Zoom call with you. Uh, and if you, uh, if, if, you know, so long as we don't violate the Open Public Meetings Act to come up with that list, because that legislation will come before this council within the six month period, as you know. 
So um, Mr. Moon has a draft, but we want to do it with you. I'm sorry, Council Council Moon. So, so uh, you just said six months. We we are in eight, no, we're May, June, July, August. We should know what we're doing um, by May, by June, actually. So two months. Um, yes. I know that the um, Cannabis Commission was uh, meeting today to have input uh, with respect to regs. I know their regs aren't out yet, but at least for the ordinance, um, as far as we're concerned, I, I just want to um, move yes. on. But yeah, so we'll we'll circle yes. back offline. I'll call you, you tomorrow and say that. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman McCartney, I saw you. No, right thank you. Yes, thank you very much because I had that listed under pending matters. And if you did see that, it was in the sustainability management plan. And we have been talking about this for quite a while. I actually expected it to be on our agenda tonight as a recommendation to for the council to recommend the planning board to go over the zoning regulations because it's my understanding from a previous email that this all has to be done before August. Yes, you're so, right. So that's what. Um, the, I do the, mayor, the mayor uh, totally agrees. Good. Okay. Thank you. Councilwoman um, Williams. Just also wanted to bring to the council's attention that there is going to be a NJ Cannabis Virtual Roundtable uh, sponsored by a, medic a medicinal facility that is already operating out of South Orange on June 4th. Um, from 4 to 6 p.m. So if you do not have that information, I'll be certainly happy to share that. Um, but they do want to just talk about the benefits and negative aspects of cannabis uh, approval um, with their neighboring communities and towns. And so again, if you do not have that information, I'll be happy to share that with my council colleagues. And I would certainly welcome and encourage each of us uh, to participate. Um, and just- I always need that. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm so, I believe we all received that. Okay. Yeah, we yeah. did. Um, and, and the chief has also um, offered for council colleagues to, if those of you who want to take a, um, a field trip, if you will, to the um, dispensary in Seacock, as he knows the, um, he's a retired police officer. Uh, I'm sure he's retired sergeant or captain, I don't know. Um, but that does the security for a dispensary in Seacock because I thought that that would be um, also very interesting. And then there is one that we're pending um, to go visit a, um, a cultivation site also in um, Patterson. That's I one. think that would be extremely helpful yeah, as we you know, encourage making decisions. So if we can set that up and organize that, I know we have a lot and it may not be 100% participation, but if we can certainly organize those tours, I, I would certainly be willing to participate. I, I don't know if the chief is still out, out there, um, if he's listening, um, but chief, if you're out there still, that would be um, great if we can set that up with um, the dispensary in um, Seacock. He is, he is in the attendee pool. Do you not want me to bring him, do you, would you like me to bring him over yes, to the panelists? Please. Okay. please, thank you. Okay, chief, don't do anything to your computer. I'm just gonna bring you over. Is that something that we would all be able to go? Not together, I would imagine, because then that's a, um, you know. Yes, so long as you don't deliberate, and okay. you can definitely all go if you're available. Great. Say so we could take the Jitney bus. Mm -hmm. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> Road trip. Chief, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Good, how are you? Can, Good. Um, yeah, I'm, on, I'm working, okay. I was I was sharing with the council um, your offer to take us on a field trip to the uh, dispensary in Sea Caucus. Um, are you still able to arrange that? Yes, everybody has to have their brown bag lunch, their permission slip signed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we can arrange. I'm sure, we can arrange that. <laughs> All right. So if you if you can reach out and and um and make those arrangements and let us know what what you know is the best time for us to to do that, that would be great. I think it it. it certainly valuable. And then I thank you for um, the offer. I know you offered this last year, but I think we're at the point where we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be all five council or is that a open um, call? Mr. Chang said, yeah, Mr. Chang said it was fine so long as we weren't deliberating. So yeah. no, no samples. Geez. We'll, no we'll samples. play, we'll play the quiet <laughs> game in the, in the jitney. <laughs> no, no samples, chief. <laughs> All right, I think that that was it. Does, does any of my council colleagues, do you have any anything else for new business? Uh, Councilwoman Castellino. Not, not so much for new business, but I was remiss in uh, not realizing uh, that we had went ahead and passed the fireman's contract um, union. Um, just wanted to make a few comments about that. If, if my colleagues could uh, 
uh, don't mind. I, you know, it's been a, a long time. I'm glad that it finally came to fruition, especially for our firefighters. Uh, the past year has a lot has been upon them with them protecting the community in this pandemic and being the frontline responders to it. So um, I'm glad to see it all come to, uh, to a close. So just wanna thank all our firefighters. Thank God they're safe and well, and uh, glad to see this come to a closure. Absolutely, thank you for that, okay. Councilman Castellino. Mm -hmm. And Chief, I'm gonna put you on the spot one more time. Um, okay. Can you just share with uh, my colleagues and, and the public our new recruits who are um, on training? I, I, there's an acronym I was told, I don't know what it is, but we have some new, um, new members on our force. So we, we hired a dozen, um, two were already police officers um, in Irvington and in East Orange. And one of the, uh, one of our female recruits uh, hurt her either her ankle or her knee, I forget which, jogging the weekend before she was supposed to start at Essex with the other nine. So um, she is now in Morris County Police Academy, just because that's how the dates aligned. We you know, wanted to get her in as soon as she was able. Um, she's doing remarkably well up there from all I understand. The nine that graduated are in the uh, field training officer, the FTO program. That's probably the acronym you were considering. Um, they're, they're all doing good. Um, one of our, uh, our female recruits graduated top in her class and got the merit award. Uh, we also had the president of the class and two, um, like platoon leaders. I couldn't think of what they were called. And, and well, I understand yeah. there's diversity. In our uh, diversity and we have, uh, you know, good leadership skills there. So, um, in fact, Charlie Bryan, our lieutenant who oversees the Monterey Academy said, uh, that this is probably the first time he never got a call from the academy, and it's probably the largest class that we've had in, in probably probably since Charlie's been doing it at least. But you know, it's not often that we hire you know or send nine at one time. It's usually you know three, four. So um, you know to to get that, and then to have the director of the police academy tell me how impressed he was with the West Orange recruits. So um, you know, we're we're getting there. I've talked to Dr. Jones about uh, doing something explicitly for the um, minorities in the police department to encourage them to study for the promotional exams, which are coming up for mostly nice. to be real for Sergeant. Um, I was kidding with Charlie the other day, cause he's probably over 30 years. And, uh, you know, I said he was studying something or doing some training. I said, that's for your captain's test, right? So, <laughs> so he, uh, he said, I don't know, man. I don't know, chief. I said, well, come on. I'm still here and I'm older than you. You could stay. So, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully I'd love to see Charlie move up to be a yeah. ranking captain, but he, he's just he's just a, a great person to begin with, you know, all, all other things aside. But it's it's also great to increase the diversity ranks. But, um, yeah, Dr. Jones was very helpful in, in saying that he would meet with the uh, African-American officers that are eligible for the sergeant's test and, and kind of encourage them. And, you know, he, he shed some light on that there's a possibility that, um, you know, uh, people don't see themselves in those positions because they don't have the role models other than Charlie and, you know, diff different things. Um, I, I learn from Dr. Jones every time I talk to him. So, um, you know, he's, he's, he's been a, 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 a tremendous help to me throughout the summer and the, the aftermath of George Floyd. I can't say enough good things about uh, Dr. Jones and, um, you know, some Reverend Guyton, uh, Pastor Adams, Tammy. I mean, I, I've I've been blessed to have some, you know, African American friends in the community that I can really go to and learn to listen from. So it's been, you know, it's nice. been an experience for me. Wonderful. Thank you so Mr. much. I have a question for the chief. Yes, please. Uh, chief, how does um, or has COVID will it have an impact on the Junior Academy? It's so popular. Um, um, we we. We discussed it and we've decided to run it. We're, we're kind of, um, you know, calculating our risk here that things will open up more by summer. But um, I, I think we can do it even if, you know, even if they need to wear masks, you know, considering their ages, they may not be vaccinated, different mm -hmm. things. But, um, you know, for all intents and purposes, I believe that unless, you know, something goes sideways on us, they're all going to be back to school you know, in, in session to school within a couple of weeks of that. So um, I, I think we'll be okay. That's good. Thank you. Well done. It's such a great program. Be mm -hmm. a shame if you're not able to have it. 
Yeah, we canceled it last year, and I really didn't want to cancel it again this year. So I, you know, I got a, got the command staff together, and I said, let's, you know, let's make this happen. And I, I think we can do it, and I think we can do it safely. Thank you right. so much, Chief. Um, Council colleagues, anything else? So if there is no further business, I would like to, with commendation to our council president and our council colleagues, just acknowledge the fact that it is 919 <laughs> p.m. <laughs> on May 4th, 2021, and we are formally adjourning our council meeting. So without <laughs> any further ado, I'll second that. I move that we adjourn this council meeting. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 I love the enthusiasm. The meeting okay. is adjourned. Okay. Good Put night, this West Orange. Trip. Happy Mother's Day, all mothers in West Orange. Happy Mother's Day. Happy okay. Mother's thank Day. you. This Happy is to inform Mother's everyone Day. that when I that end the meeting, right. it will end for those both on and off screen, and no other business will be conducted. Thank you all, and have a great night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.